All right, everyone, I've got word that we are ready for Five Nights at Freddy's security breach, so let's go over to Ace Delusional. Take it away. Hello, hello. I'm Ace Delusional. I'll be running all endings inbounds today for you all. I'm so excited to be here. I want to introduce you. I'm Alexa High, or you can just call me Alex. Uh, I'm the sole commentator for this run. Uh, I will be your awesome commentator, your awesome single commentator. We only need one. It's fine. Yeah. So we'll get started. We'll explain more about the run. We have a little bit of an intro sequence that doesn't have too much going on, so we'll explain more of the run when we get inside of it. And oh boy, do we have stuff to explain. And timing will start in a little bit. We just have to skip the intro cutscene real quick. It'll take forever to load. This game has just such short loading screens. It's great. Lovely optimization. So how's the weather? The timing will be in three, two, one, go. So the first thing you'll notice, well, first, my screen is very bright because I need to be able to actually see the game and not be pitch black half the time. But also, our voice volume is off, and this will basically cut off all of the dialogue-based cutscenes in the game, which will save, like, several minutes over the course of the run. the obligatory event scene. All right, so all endings, there are six endings in the game, and the goal is basically to get all six of them. There are three main escape-like endings, which all require us to trigger the 550 uh, sequence, which is Roxy Eye Upgrade. And it's located at the main entrance, the prize counter, and the loading docks. And I also need to collect 39 collectibles and get security level 6 throughout the run. And there's also Princess Quest ending, which I need to play the three arcade machines around the map in order. Afton, which is a quote-unquote boss fight, because all we do is just push eight buttons, and that's the boss fight. And then Bandy ending, which is also just pushing a button in her hideout. So, yeah. We really like buttons in this game. You'll find that out later. And also, the movement strategy I'm doing here, it's called skip scopping. And basically, I'm letting go of the sprint while I'm in the middle of the air. And that conserves our sprint speed until we land on the ground. It basically, like, doubles the distance we can go. It's also called there's... bunny hopping, which I think is cuter, but you know. Let me get on the railing there and just skip all the way down there. Many runs have died getting soft locked in that pool. It's kind of ridiculous. And you'll notice that the brightness changes in cutscenes. Why? Because it can. We have a time for a few donations while Vanessa is yelling at Freddy. Awesome, thank you so much. I have a $15 donation from Tact FNC. Known Ace Delusional for a while, been supporting his speedruns and music work for a year. Good luck on the speedrun. Be sure to make a Gregory Among Us vent joke. <laughs> thank you so much for your donation. I have $50 from Scruffy Seraph. So excited for the horror block. Good luck on the FNAF run, superstar. Thank you so much for your donation. And a $10 donation from Heedless Moss. Loved the Silent Hill 4 run. Let's go FNAF. Thank you so much for your donation. Uh, we could do a few more. We just gonna walk with Freddy for a little bit. 
Awesome, awesome. I have $50 from Breezy. Hey, little guy, super proud of you for running at GDQ Ace. Avoid the stutters, crush the chickens, and make sure to ask Vanny if she's having fun yet. From the FNAF SB mod team, your friend, Breezy. Thank you so much for your donation. And $5 from Anonymous. There is no comment, but thank you so, so much. Also, a $500 donation from Pi. No comment, but thank you so, so much. Now we will get our first taste at the animatronics in the game. And they are very dumbed down in the beginning with little no AI, so we can literally just run past them. We have very smart AIs at the very beginning of the game. It really does help newer players out. And the first intro uh, chase sequence Monty is actually uh, relative to your speed, so you can actually just walk this entire segment and not get caught, which is kind of funny. Chase sequence. Wait for it, wait for it, button. Yay, button. I should have mentioned earlier, so the collectibles are in these things in the wind-up music boxes that do not affect the game. We need to collect 39 total, which is about three-fifths of the total amount. There are required items, upgrades, and passes that are also in these wind-up music boxes, but those are not counted towards 39. So here we'll do a little a hop again here. So this is the Fizzy Faz, which basically increase, decreases the stamina consumption. So we can skip scop for longer. And now we're gonna save because this game is so unpredictable. We're actually gonna trigger Chica here because it'll work better with the cycle we're going to take. And I can explain a little bit more later. But we will save more than actual runs just because the autosave system is very bad. And if I do mess up at a part, I don't want to have to reset like 15 minutes. So this is the part where Chica is very unpredictable. I have no idea where she is. And she's right there. <laughs> and somehow did not see us. Amazing AI, really, truly. <gasps> Maybe you can show them the table trick. Uh, that is out of bounds, and that is not allowed in this category. <laughs> so yeah, so yeah, so this is in bounds. Basically, no out of bounds tricks are allowed. You will see some tricks that deload the map because there are some weird triggers in the game that just do that. As you can see right here, void floor, nothing to worry about. But as long, those tricks are allowed, but as long as we don't abuse the deload. And here we are about to go to our first security badge sequence called the daycare, which has the best music in the whole game. So here we have a bunch of tricks that are coming right back to the other. So we're gonna hop into this slide. There are two cutscene triggers that are in this ball pit, so we're just gonna hop over the fence to skip those. And the second, we actually are not able to pick up the flashlight because we skipped the second cutscene trigger. So we're gonna have to, after we grab it, hop here and hop over this invisible barrier. 
and we can see our only 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 time we'll see sun and moon this game. That's a horrible cutscene. So has horrible. The best dialogue. Naughty boy, naughty boy. You've been naughty. <laughs> so in this sequence, we have to go around the playpen and turn on the five generators. Punish me, Moon Man. Why are there generators in a daycare? Because it can be. Also, it's very funny. Moon can get just stuck on these chairs. And actually, the most recent patch, they just removed the chairs so Moon can't get stuck there anymore. Gosh, that was so scary. My heart is pounding. Wow, that was a terrifying 30 seconds. And now we are banned from the daycare. Another thing I forgot to mention earlier, this is done on the 1.04 patch. There were, there was a 1.05 patch back in January that patched a lot of stuff. And there's another one about a month ago that patched another ton of stuff. So a, like a lot, most of these glitches you'll see today can't be done on the current patch. And the, uh, then you'll realize the night sequences on this game can be very glitchy. Moon, Moon can kill you while you're inside Freddy, and he can just spawn right on top of you. Yeah, very fair. And here we are introduced to Vanny, the person in the game that has no AI, and we see like three times in the whole game. That's supposed to be the main character. There is a skip for this cutscene, because as you can see, it takes up like a lot of time. Uh, but for inbounds, uh, because of sequence breaking, you need to be able to call Freddy right after this. And uh, this cutscene gives you the ability to be able to call Freddy at will. So if you miss that in inbounds, you're done for. And right here, we actually need to use Freddy. So this is one of the one of the main glitches that really breaks inbounds runs and it's called Freddy door clipping. And now it's time for time travel. So Freddy can basically open any door in the game. A lot of the doors are locked behind a security level, but we can just go inside Freddy and Freddy would just push us, push us past the invisible barrier. And we'll need the screwdriver for later for one thin sequence. A surprise tool that'll help us later. And even though Freddy can open the door, they are still an invisible barrier blocking us. So that's why we have to exit with Freddy. And now, here's the music. I was, I'll get you all used to this music because you will hear it about 20 more times in this run. It's a glorified loading screen. We love the elevators. So here is Mapbot, <clears throat> everyone's favorite character, and I failed to skip. So you can actually skip that little jump scare just hanging to the left wall. How dare you? Poor Mapbot's gonna be waiting there forever now. So there, there's a, there's a big thing called wedge jumps in this game that you can just jump into like an acute angle, just spam jump, and you can just climb up the wall. So we use that to climb over the fence to get past the barriers. The game uses those barriers a lot in the, like, the first half to really lead the player on where to go casually. Get past there. Now we're going to probably the, one of the most broken parts of the run called Princess Quest 1, which is the first arcade machine. Oh, no. And this part basically kills 
at least half my runs because it is a major crash point. So we need to pray that it does not crash. Okay, everyone, hold your breath right now. Hold it. Princess Quest is the bane of everyone's existence. Like, you have no idea. When he says major crash point, he means the majority of the time when you click the arcade machine, it, the entire game crashes just instantly. And luckily we found, I went to the thing to trigger 2 a.m. If you saw in the right hand, the top right hand corner, that actually slightly reduces the rate of crashes, which I'm not exactly sure why, it's just something in the game. Here we go. Woo! Now we're just gonna light about 20 torches. We don't have any we melee weapons in this game, so we just have to avoid everything. This is the lore. This is the game's lore. You think this game had lore? This is the lore. You're a tiny yellow girl and there are face-eating monsters and it has absolutely nothing to do with anything else, but you know what? It's kind of cool. Uh, we probably have a few donation, donation time while I finish this up. Wonderful. I have $15 from Anonymous that says, shout outs to the animatronic with the screaming man inside. Thank you so much. I have $13 from Drifty. Good luck, Ace. All of us are cheering you on. $50 from Jetboy the Mage, horror block, best block. $5 from Fairy Baby, Freddy, you're supposed to be on lockdown. But Vanessa, I need to watch SGDQ. Thank you so much for your donations. And $50 from Biff the Moose. Way to go, superstar. I knew you could do it. The lore, it's the lore, guys. The lore. Let's hear it for the lore. Let's hear it for the lore. We will get pizza later in the game. Also, let's hear it for no crashing. I'm very surprised. So there we got the shoe upgrade. It is basically a speed upgrade, so you can instantly see we're much faster. And more collectible collecting time. So the reason why he's collecting all these collectibles is because, I kid you not, one of the escape endings is to escape through a fire escape that's locked behind a paywall of 39 collectibles. Why? Because security breach. Well, it is the prize counter. The prize counter is very exclusive. So mm, we're physics. heading to our Freddy is stuck behind the door. For some reason, he cannot open it. Freddy. Let's hear it for the programming. There you there are. There he is. So we are heading to our first ending very early on into the run because we can skip all of the requirements required for it. You guys like buttons? You're bound to get buttons. So I called Freddy up there just so he's there when we exit. Even though we will need him. Luckily when we save, it actually saves Freddy location. So even though we use Freddy in this next part, when I reload the save, he'll be right there and that makes it for a quick and easy exit out of Roxy Raceway. So to get into the Afton boss fight, these, these are the Monty claw doors that you usually need to decommission Monty to upgrade him with his claws and that can basically break the doors. And there's just, you can just call Freddy on the other side and there's just a sliver of land. Who needs doors? Now here is 
one of another broken glitch in the game called Freddy Warping. I just want to show you guys. Oh, it. boy. So usually we need to get past the voice box gate, which is the same thing as the Monte by the Chica. And that did not work. Let's try again. And we just teleport with Freddy to the other side of the voice box gate. So Security breach moment. Oh, that Surprise, it's a button! It's an elevator! <clears throat> so, Freddy warping is a very confusing trick. So there are two types, which that is called the Quantum Freddy Warp. So Quantum Freddy is what is happening right now. <laughs> when you call Freddy in a place that he cannot reach, he just goes crazy and just teleports everywhere. Hence, so you hence call him this. again. Oh. So this is mm. Quantum Freddy. And I he will just Quantum keep Freddy. on following us. So we can abuse that and basically warp with Freddy. He's a little quirky sometimes, it's okay. And basically we, we call Freddy when he's right next to us, when we're, he's in a place that we can't, or he can't reach, and he just teleports us away. And there's another type of Freddy Warp that you will see later, so we'll explain that when we get there. And this is the start of the Afton boss fight. It's lore time again. It is also RNG time. Oh boy. The only RNG point of this run. So, story behind this lore, this deep lore. Your grandpa has been stuck in there for like 30 years and he's kind of gross, kind of like grizzly in between the teeth. Uh, we call him P. Paul Willie affectionately. So he's a little angry right now and we gotta press buttons to get him to calm down and go to bed forever. So Afton basically takes control of the monitors and he can just control Freddy with his mind boggling powers. So there are three monitors. The first one is always in the middle. We just basically push the button and to burn him. I like Grandpa on fire a little bit. It's okay. And there are, there are three total monitors. We want him to stay in the middle because each time he goes to the left or right monitor, it, it will add an additional 25, 29 seconds because it takes, because it's 30 seconds between each button press each time he goes to the left or right, it adds the time because the 30 seconds doesn't start until he gets back to the middle. So we want him to stay like that the whole time. And the funny thing with this fight, luckily Roxy spawned first, is we can, usually to lead Roxy away in this boss fight, you need Chica's voice box, and I'll make a, a sound with Freddy and I'll lead her away. But if we just have Freddy blocking the doorway, Roxy is just stuck there. Fredor. Not awkward at all. So yeah, we can do donations for the rest of this fight because there's nothing going on. All right, I have $20 from Aaron that says, for the buttons. Thank you so much for your donation. I agree, for the buttons. I have, for the buttons, yeah. <laughs> I have $50 from Gregor Monkey Chat. You are so cute. Cute chat, cute chat, ayaya. 300K get. Yeah, we hit $300,000, everyone. Let's hear it for that. <laughs> Incentive goes to Host's Choice, which of course my choice is the Omori name for Omocat. Thank you very much. I have $765 from AJN Rolls. Let's get to 300,000. Thank you so much for helping us get there. We did hit that goal. Yeah. There's never too much cheering for raising money. Thank you all so much. $150 from Creature. More GDQ hype. <laughs> Thank you so much for your donation. We have time for some more? 
Oh, yes, we're about halfway done. Oh, yeah. All right, I've got you. I have $25 from Anonymous. I just wanted to donate and say how exciting it is to be back in person with everyone. It's so hard for me to hold back tears of joy from all the positive energy you are all providing. And it's showing on stream as well. Your applause, gasps, laughter, memeing, and taking care of your fellow speedrunners make this event extremely special to this old person's heart. Don't stop being awesome, everyone. Less than three. Well, that was really sweet. Thank you so much. You guys are killing it with the donations. Thank yeah, you. You're the best. <laughs> Roxy's a little broken there, that's okay. Yeah, it's fine. She's probably okay. She's having a grand time. Speaking of Roxy, I have $30 from Beach Fox donating to a great cause and to also see my girl Roxy on Wolf tonight. Just like her, you're all the best. No, you're 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 all the best. <laughs> Roxy is definitely a fan favorite in the community. She's pretty good. You wouldn't know it. She's okay, though. Who's everyone else's she, She's favorite? a little beat up. Who's everyone else's favorite animatronic, and why is it Roxy? <laughs> so we still have two more button presses. Well, let's hear it for some buttons. <laughs> Peepaw's a little slow sometimes. It's okay. We love him anyway. Well, that's okay. Peepaw's trying his best. Oh, we have $20 from Dan, the man. So hyped to see SB in a GDQ. The community around running this game has been awesome. Good luck with Peepaw Afton, Ace. Thank you so much. Very topical. Peepaw's I, a little confused, I think. Peepaw's doing his best. <laughs> and I have $25 from Sammy P. I don't like to play scary games, but I love watching them. Picked a good night to not be able to sleep. You did pick a good night, and you will continue not to be able to sleep, because these are spooky game blocks. Honestly, the scary thing about this game is the glitches. <laughs> Wait, it's not Peepaw? Peepaw's, hmm. It's, it's not our a... friend, the sun and the moon? He is a friend, right? He's yeah. a friend, uh, right? No. Yeah. Oh, okay, okay. Uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> We're talking about sun, he's a friend, but I don't know about moon. I mean, they both seem like nice gentlemen. I think Peepaw's kind of scrungly. Who else agrees? <laughs> Thank you. Thank Give it you. up for Scruggly Peepaw. Also, Roxy got very mad and she ran away. And that is the end of the first ending. Woo, we did it. Wow. One frame of the cutscene. That's okay. We don't need a lore. Yeah, we don't need to watch cutscenes. Okay, now we are going back to that save recreated in Roxy Wasteway. So there is a incredibly long loading screens. So there is a security bot down here that actually opens the garage doors and the hitbox, the invisible hitbox just continues going up. So we just use that to jump over that railing. And like I said, the, that deloads the map, but I don't go through anything. So that like counts for an immense bounds run. So now we are going over here to the early Roxy cutscene. So usually to decommission Roxy, you need to grab the dance pass, which I just did, and the, re the damage tag, and go to the DJ Music Man fight, do that, come back, and trigger the cutscene. But you can just jump on to the racetrack, and there's just a cutscene trigger. Uh, who needs to play the game, right? We actually need to get this early on, because like I said earlier, there are three endings locked behind upgrading Freddy with Roxy's eyes. Roxy smack him. Cool. Not like this. Come on. <laughs> even though Roxy, she's okay. even though Roxy's she's a okay. fan favorite, she is the she's only okay. animatronic that we destroy in this room. Well, besides that, you know. she's fine. Look at her. She's okay. A little sleepy. <clears throat> And this is probably one of the most glitchy fights. Her AI can just break. If you oh, hit a distraction here, she will just completely freak out and just not work. I need to bust it in.
Also, this is another reason why we have the brightness all the way up, so I cannot see in this fight at all when it's down. And here's the only time we need to use the screwdriver to open that. Yay for the screwdriver! Woo! <laughs> and that is the Roxy boss fight. In all its glory. Roxy's fine. As you saw at the end, it triggered a 540 AM, which will actually help us with some time traveling, the time traveling that we'll do later on in the run. Probably one of the more confusing parts of the run to explain. See, the real lore of this game is the time traveling. You thought it was about animatronics chasing down a kid and, and peepaw often? No, it's time travel. This sadistic murdering kid goes and destroys these three animatronics and time travels to do it. That's the lore. That's the lore we're here for. And we can just run past these animatronics because Roxy AI is just broken and she's just chilling down in the basement still. She's just chilling in the fiery basement. It's okay. She's okay. Like I said earlier, we put Freddy on this railing, so he's still chilling up there, so we can just enter him from down here. And usually you need either the Chica voice box or the Monty's Claws to like enter that area. Those are the two gates that we skipped. More. We have some more Freddy door clipping and traveling to go. We're going to up go upgrade Freddy next, so we do have some more time for donations. Wonderful. I have $25 from Impact Zach. This is donation jump scare. Thank you so much for your donation. I was very scared. I have $10 from Izzy Cat that says, The Lore! The Lore. The Lore is so good. $10 from JB Henry. Happy to leave a $10 donation. And to wish our host, Nicole, good night, a happy birthday. I hope it involves you driving around in your favorite car. Thank you so much. It involves me hosting, and that is one of my favorite things to do. So thank you so much. This is for you, Nicole. Thank you. <laughs> we got it net for me. I appreciate it. And more GDQ. I have $5 from preferred name alias, pilot mode engaged, Titan Freddy ready to bear. Thank you so much for your donation. And also another funny thing, so in some areas besides elevators to have loading zones, they just have big Z rooms that you just travel back and forth. So we can just completely skip that in this whole map. It's just deloaded now. That's why that. they're the, yeah. We don't need to talk about the void room. It's okay. And also Freddy's calling is also very broken in some spots anywhere else in this room and he will just teleport downstairs even though we called him up here but luckily in that corner looking at a specific spot he'll always spawn upstairs that used to be a real run killer because the way that freddy's call when you call freddy he will basically go to your exact position and unless he gets stuck somewhere is when he'll teleport to try to reach your location again. But when he teleports downstairs, he just keeps running in a big circle, thus never teleporting away from that area. God, I love the physics of this game. And we're about to head down to parts and services where we will upgrade Freddy and introduce you to one of the and what are we upgrading him with? Roxy's eyes. And more buttons! Different buttons this time. They're colored buttons. Oh my goodness, they stole my heart. They're circular buttons, oh, too. This is amazing. Four different colors. Four different colors. Oh, stop, I can't handle this. Everyone give it up for the glorified loading screen. Oh, there we go. Don't cheer for that. <laughs> but I like my elevator music. Can we cheer for that? So one more collectible and then we'll go upgrade Freddy.
And now we get to play Simon Says. We gotta do surgery on a Freddy. So Freddy's a little sick, guys. Uh, he, he needs fixin'. Uh, you're gonna see another skip here, just after Ace completes this uh, little section here. It's called Circuit Breaker. So usually you'd have to do that whole Simon Says sequence and then do it all over again uh, when reattaching the eyes right here. But instead of doing the whole thing again, there you go. Yeah, we did that by, when we put it back in the eyes, we basically just double click and that somehow we we're able to skip the second sequence of the second cycle. Why does it work? Because security breach. And also, controller players cannot perform that glitch, so sorry, PlayStation. Sorry, guys, not but really. PC is better. better. I heard some angry yells back there. It's okay, guys, you can admit it. No, so we can press the buttons right after we hit them, or right after it shows. We don't have to like wait for the whole sequence to start or finish before we press the buttons. Now, so this is where time travel will play a huge effect. So we need to trigger a later thing because Moon, at the end of every hour, Moon will spawn and you usually need to go to recharge station and that triggers like the next hour. 550, or when you skip a Moon sequence, so if I was at 2 a.m. and I did this 550, that skipped two moon sequences, it's the previous moon would just insta-kill me right when the nighttime started. So luckily by 540 triggered at the end of the Roxy fight, we are able to not have to deal with the insta-death. Moon is the time travel police. There is one instance of him going into a completely new game to hunt down the person who dared oppose him. It's, it's interesting. So usually in the sequence is when casually you just go to the ending of your choice. So you can see in the top right that's counting each minute. But we are actually going to do our Showtime security badge during this. Which is something we usually do at like 2 a.m. in the game. Guys, 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 it's button time. It's really button time. And now we mash E. E. E, e. Yeah, so we lead, we're leading injured Freddy. So, so usually in, Freddy is injured in this place. He's trying to help us escape and we're opening doors for him. But we can just press any button in this room. There's six total. So all we'd have to do is just spam one button. And it only here. works with voice volume off for whatever reason. You can eat harder than that. E. E. So there's also a weird state in this game that we're actually, Freddy just got here, we're gonna make him open up this vent. So actually, in a marathon setting, we're actually just gonna wait until 555 pops up. So when, I, when we get a mission completed status, so usually in the night sequences, the save stations are inactive. But for some reason, when you complete a mission, they become active again. But when another minute passes through this sequence, if they, so if 555 happened, then the save stations will automatically like disable again. So we reload the save, and it will just magically be daytime now. And we don't have to deal with moon anymore. Oh, yeah, that's yeah, a short loading screen. And now we have loading hallway. <clears throat> so yeah, so you can see uh, Freddy is injured right now, and that is bad for us. But we have a, another security breach moment coming up, and that is called Princess Quest 2. Don't worry, this one does not crash. It's only Princess Quest 1. Nobody knows why, no one's figured out why, and we probably never will. Princess Quest 2 and 3 are fine, though. And by just going into this arcade machine, Freddy will just fix itself. He probably just got repaired while we are busy playing the arcade, but we will never know. 
But before we do that, we're actually going to get our second ending, the escape ending. So this one of the three main escape endings, this one only requires that there's Mapbot again. Mapbot's just there. It's okay. This one only requires Roxy's eyes. It does not have any other requirements. So we're just going to quickly go down here and escape. After some Four more elevator screen. music. And also when you trigger some things, you'll see the dialogue pop up. That's for when you usually escape the pizza plex. For some reason, when you trigger stuff that the next trigger should just stay there through the rest of the game. Oh, that floor. That's why there's a flash warning, guys. So even though it's closed, you can actually still escape. Yeah, this, we don't need doors. So there's an autosave that actually happens right there, right when you trigger the cutscene. And when you load the autosave, that just skips the full dialogue with Freddy about wanting to stay or leave. As it loads, we can just hit leave. And there's escape ending. Yeah. Ah, boring ending. Don't clap. Don't clap. <laughs> chat, what was that? What, what are y'all doing? <laughs> did you just call them chat? I did. No, don't. <laughs> also, look at this beautiful Listen. atrium. <laughs> All right, what's up next? What so, buttons are we going to press? And as you can hear, our volume is kind of messed up right now. It's very quiet. That's just another security breach moment we got. So it just sounds very echoey. And, and I hope you guys like elevators. Do you like them yet? I really don't. <laughs> Yay, elevator, <clears throat> woohoo. One guy in the back, I'm with you. So we're actually, we're going to reload the save again because Monty is in a weird state right now when we did the backstage showtime sequence and he will, he, he's classified as Giga Monty right now. Because the moment he's, once we trigger that sequence, he is, will just, infinitely chase you. So if he spotted us, he would just infinitely chase us until no end. So we want to get that collectible, so we despawn. By reloading this area, it just despawns the animatronics. Gigamonte was a term coined by a humble poppy playtime speedrunner. You probably don't know him. And there's Chica's wonderful AI by teleporting to us five minutes after the security bot saw us. <clears throat> that sound, by the way, is Chica teleporting. She, if you don't look at her, for whatever reason, she just decides not to walk. Most of the time, she just teleports because she can. And here's our beautiful Princess Quest 2. Oh, four times. So this one, we finally have a sword in this game. And we're going to go for a yellow strat the first time. Because there are these enemies that shoot these white orbs. But no matter like where we, once we trigger them, no matter where, where we are on the map, they will continually shoot at us. So we'll kill a, a, some of them, but the rest will leave alive. And we'll just have to dodge all of the orbs. Light more torches, because that's Princess Quest, just lighting torches. This stresses me out so much. That's probably the most scary room. Guys, it's so scary, it's almost like it's a horror game. And here it also introduces us to our shadow self. So the red flames just introduced that. We had to trigger the yellow torches while the shadow form triggers the blue one. 
That, in, that introduces like some interesting puzzles, especially in the third Princess Quest. Or in the later in the second Princess Quest, I should say. So in this room, we have a little bit of different strat. Usually we light all these torches in a room, opens up at the bottom, and that leads us back to the play, spawn room. But we just go in a circle, a big circle, and we just go back. It's, this is a couple of seconds, despite going the regular way. So if you hit, swing your sword the same time you entered that, you can actually walk in this final room. It's just a funny thing. That's the start of the Princess Quest 3. Lore, lore. So, yeah. so while we were in that arcade machine, Freddy decided to just go fix itself. So Freddy is now up and running again which will be very useful. And also, I have some bad news for everyone, but we will not be doing the DJ Music Man sequence. It is everyone's favorite fight, but it is too slow. So He's too good I for us. Sorry. Music uh, Man's too good for us. As the best music in the game. Coming up oh boy, next elevator time. will be our other kind of Freddy Warping called uh, Pathfind Freddy Warping. <clears throat> so the way that Freddy Pathfinds to us when we call him, like I said earlier, when he gets stuck on something after some time, he will teleport again to try to reach your location. So we can actually abuse that and basically warp with Freddy. So we're getting inside Freddy while he teleports to try to find a better location to where he called him. And luckily, the animation of going into Freddy does not count as controlling, so we can, he can still teleport while we are getting inside of him. So we're gonna get Freddy stuck on the security bot with the invisible barrier get inside of him, and he just teleports to the elevator. and that skips having us get the, we usually need a pass to get past the uh, security bot that was there. Another elevator, wow. Five nights at elevator. I think that's the next one on the series. Well, I have some time for like two donations. All right, I have a $30 donation from Hatchling. I'd love to stay up and donate this during the Omori run, but I start my new job in the morning, putting this towards poisoning the sous chef because I choked on my Pop-Tart the first time I experienced that. They are, of course, referencing the Poison the Sous Chef incentive, which is at $770 out of $7,500. If met, Star Smiley will bake a really bad cake during the Omori run, leading to the unfortunate passing of the sous chef that tastes it. So thank you so much for your donation and going towards that incentive. So coming up next is a strange instance of another security breach moment. So there are a lot of out of order doors in this game, but they actually, they actually connect areas that you wouldn't think connect. Oh no, it's this one. So Freddy can open these doors. And so we get on this railing, got the boxes, and we'll door clip inside, and we are in F Franny's, Franny's, Vanny's hideout. And this is usually connected to Fazer Blaster, which is on the complete, like, other side of the map. And we actually, we the Princess Quest arcade machines actually autosave, but since we're in this room early, this one doesn't, activate at first, so we have to quit arcade, and that activates the room, and so it auto saves, and that, because we will want to spawn right back there after this. Security breach moment. And surprisingly, in the older patches, these conveyor belts actually made, if your PC had too many frames, uh, too much FPS, it was literally impossible because the faster your FPS, the faster the conveyor belts went. 
And luckily in my computer, I'm able to skip the first sequence, but not the second one, so I have to do it regularly. So it's mainly this part right here. The conveyor belts are just too fast and they just fling you off the map and there's just no way to avoid it if your FPS was too high. But luckily it is fixed now. And By the way, yeah, Cheek is on the floor. Uh, it, it's lore, don't worry about it. I'm no. a little worried about it. That's good, you shouldn't be. Not at all. If you want more lore, you might recognize this area if you played previous FNAF games. And it's the Roxy Maze. Lore. Guys, it's lore. It's lore. Foxy just got out of there. It's lore. Don't worry. Yeah, for some reason, if you saw it, Fox, Foxy was just outside the maze when he entered. When you do the right segment first, he just, Foxy just decides to just chill outside the maze and go there. Oh, I'll just ignore that. Yeah, we're just gonna ignore those enemies. Here. You playing Princess Quest stresses me out so much. You're welcome. <laughs> so that is the Princess Quest ending. Whenever it decides to pop up. Lore. Yeah. Lore? So that is half half of the endings. So coming up is probably one of the harder segments of the run. So Vanny ending, there's a button here. So we just turn around and press that button. And there's Vanny ending. What can I say? He's a genius. So usually to reach this room, you need to, this is supposed to be a secret area. So if you choose to decommission Chica, and you go up here through the vent after doing this uh, Fazer Buster mini game, you'll get this dialogue that's popping up right now. And that unlocks basically a secret ending when you choose to, so usually when you leave, it's either like leave or stay, but if you do that, it'll pop up as Vanny, and it triggers a sequence to get inside that hideout. And also, we're just gonna go through this room back backwards, since we actually need the security badge in this place. And we need to pick up the Phaser Blast to be able to leave, and this actually spawns in our hand the flashlight for some reason. Security breach moment. So we'll get flashlight for a couple of seconds, but it will it'll leave us fairly soon. Thank you for your service, flashlight. Probably have some time for one or two donations. Sure thing, chat up, chat and crowd. I'm sorry for earlier for calling you chat and audience. I will need your help with this one. Ring the. Thank you. Lore? Ring the lore alarm. <laughs> Thank you so much for your donation. I have $20 from Small Man. I'd like to buy a vowel. E. In fact, give me as many E's as my donation will buy, and hopefully chat will do the same. Can we start a E train? And also, audience. E. <laughs> Thank you so much. I have $5 from Barney Goose. Much love to you, Ace, running the greatest category inbounds. GL, my brother in runs. Thank you for your donation. No. So usually we need the party pass to get inside of here, but we can just store clip outside of his invisible barrier. No major skips is the best, just want to say that. <clears throat> what? Sorry? So we're, we're actually, kept, we have some time for more donations. We just start doing a bunch of collectible hunting for the next few minutes. 
sounds good to me. I have $25 from Ian, Aria, and Kelly. Here's a $5 bill for each night at Freddy's. Button pushing hype. Thank you for your donation and buttons are amazing. I have $25 from Be Strong, donating $5 for each night at Freddy's. I love this franchise so much. Thank you very much. That is $5 per night at Freddy's. I have $15 from Ollie. Gregory, do you see the small vent on the floor? Have you ever heard of Among Us, Gregory? You need to vent. I know it will be hard for you to be sus, but I know you can do it, Gregory. <laughs> Thank you so much for your That's donation. Lore. Let's hear it for Lore. <laughs> so what I did there is I, I can just wedge jump on top of the uh, pillar and just jump to the other pillar that makes me inside the, the counter that's there. Because the doors are still locked to uh, security level four. Not only is Gregory a time travel master, he's also a physics master, apparently. Yeah, I just jumped over that pizza counter as well. And why do we need all these collectibles again? Because yay, fire ending. For the lore, that's right, guys. Fire escape lore. We love the lore of fire escapes. What are fire escapes, you know? Lore. It's all just lore in the end, you know? This is lore. He's lore. I'm lore. You're a lore. Golden Sun a lore? But is it? Is Golden Sun lore part of the lore? Guys, remember that. That'll be an important part of the lore later. Remember the glam money figure. That'll be part of the lore, too. Remember the flashing floor. That's also important. So, so we're actually to get so the elevator doors actually are not open. So we actually have to Freddy warp to the elevator. So you may think that we can door clip from the other side, but not to the elevator. It's just because the opening the elevators counts as like a deload abuse. So unfortunately, inbounds cannot do that. So we were soft locked for a while because we would always need to get these passes to get past. Bones Freddy warping is found. That really opened up like the whole map for inbounds. Inbounds is, I respect you. And actually in newer patches in 1.05, they patched the door clipping. So Freddy warping is the only thing you do around to, to get around the map. And also another security breach moment, this wall has no collision. And I got soft locked on the cup. Did you actually? It's lower, guys, it's okay. And this is why you save. This is why we save, because the last auto save would have been Princess Quest 3 arcade machine. Let's try it again. There we go. There we go. So I'm gonna be very careful with not triggering any animatronics because Monty can still be a Giga Monty in this area, which we do not want to deal with. You were so close to death right there. Or were the security bots just blind? Now we get this annoying alarm for a little bit. Oh. If it's annoying now, it'll be very annoying later. I hope you guys like alarms too. Also, you can play golf in that arcade machine. It's probably my favorite out of all the arcade machines. The golf literally has lore too. Like, I'm not just saying that. The golf has lore. We have time for a few donations. Wonderful. I have $50 from Emmy. Shout out to the Comfy Horror Speedruns. Thank you to the runners, commentators, and especially GDQ staff for making the event and the horror block awesome. Thank you for making the block awesome. I have $5 from Anonymous. 
Gregory, we must donate five Faz bucks in order to escape the pizza plex. Thank you for your donation. And of course, I'm very excited to hear more lore. Lore? <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> We have time for a few more we collectible hunting again. Sure thing. I have five dollars from Ace Burrito. Here's to an awesome horror block so far and a happy B-Day to our host, Nicole. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. <laughs> Thank you. I have five dollars from Afton. I always come back. Let me out. Lore? Isn't it bedtime for you, Peepaw? Lore. Thank you, thank you. Hundred dollars from Mikoshi Myers, no comment, but thank you so, so much for that. And again, as a reminder, we are at $790 out of 7,500 to poison the sous chef. Who doesn't want to, I, okay, well, who doesn't, I, I'm in too deep. Who doesn't want to poison the sous chef? Let's go. So fun fact, in the first areas that we're supposed to visit the game, this is one of them. And so the trigger, there's actually a trigger right here that just decommissions Freddy to be able to not use him. So once we go past there, we actually cannot enter Freddy anymore because they just left the trigger in the game until you complete the mission, which if, you're, if, you're, if it's too late, you can never complete it. But luckily we actually do not need Freddy anymore. Rut rope. We are on our way to the price counter ending. We have two more collectibles to collect and hopefully I did not forget one of them. It would be very bad. Plushies for a fire escape. That makes sense. A lot of sense. Security breach moment, I think. Awesome. You're right, Lord, yeah. It's Lord, you can say it, it's okay. Now it's 39 specifically, right? It's 39 or the six golden plushies hidden around the map. No, it's only the 39. The golden plushies was a myth. Ah. It took, a, it took a very long time to really determine what was needed for this ending, and people still think it's the golden plushies or I stand it's corrected. Complete, complete, being completely different, but it is, in fact, 39. Also, that, that was the fire ending. And we have one more ending to go. What do you do with the plushies? Do you, like, just throw them out the door? That how that works? Where do they go? Also, usually you're supposed to do this three-minute sequence, like the original FNAF game, where you just look at the cameras and close the doors. But since we have a high enough security badge, we can just leave. But this puts the game in a weird state. The game doesn't like having two like sequences going on at the same time that involve anim animatronics. I hope you guys like alarms, because you're going to hear this one for a little bit. It's lore, it's okay. And also Gigamonte is chasing us, but he can't leave that area, so we don't have to worry about it. You what now? <laughs> we can do that wedge jump again to jump from the third floor. And we're on our way to the loading docks. And also have bad news again, this is our last elevator. So enjoy the music while you have it. With the alarm, of course. Alarm really kills the mood. Lord, you're right. You're right. It's did Lord. Did you just say alarm? Did one of you really just say alarm? Come on, guys. You're better than that. <laughs> oh my god. Just get it over with. Good god. So as I said earlier, with the game doesn't like you doing two sequences, we actually cannot do the six security card packs. Because once we get it, we're actually locked inside that room. And for another security breach moment, 
going to the ending door just fixes it, and now we can do Pizza Bot. How I found that, I have no idea. This is the best sequence. You guys like pizza? You guys like lore? It's Pizza Bot lore time. Yeah, we are going to make a pizza. For every who yelled oh, pizza lore. at the beginning. It's a lore pizza, guys. It's a lore pizza. It's the lore pizza. And just for the fun, I'm gonna turn on voice volume because this this probably has the best voice volumes in the game. Congratulations, you have qualified for a free supreme upgrade. A free supreme upgrade? Let's get started. You are now in control of one of our highly qualified pizza making staff bots. Follow the instructions on the left side of your screen to force the bot to make the perfect Mount Watery pizza. It is now time for some cheese. Yeah. How would you rate your experience so far? That's great to hear. Now, let's get started. How would you rate your experience from one to lore? Now I need some help with the crowd. I can skip not me. Now who thinks I should skip it and who thinks I should not skip it? Don't skip it. That's what I heard. It's the lore, meat. It's the lore, meat, guys. It's the lore, meat. We're gonna bake the lore, meat, and it's gonna be lore. Now, if you played this game before, you know Chica's best dialogue is coming up. So when. Chica tackles the pizza bot. Feel free to yell pizza with her. I'm gonna go three, two, one, and then we're all gonna say pizza, okay? Again, we're gonna skip that cutscene. And time will end once I hit leave, once the area loads. Gregory. And time. Gregory. <laughs> and lore. Yeah, we can enjoy this lore. Guys, it's the it's the lore all that was all along. It's the it's the true lore. It's Mapbot is back. It was yeah, the what's, answer what's all along. What's more without Mapbot? Let's hear it for Mapbot. Let's hear it for Papa. Let's hear it for Murder Child. Yeah, that is all endings. Thank you everyone for getting this bonus game through. I really, it's been really fun here. Shout out to all of the mods in the community and the community itself. It's been really fun. It'll be, this is a really fun game to check out. It is very broken, out of bounds. It's, even, it's like, $40. There's so much in this game that this doesn't even scratch the surface for what's possible in this game. And thank you again for being commentating here. And a shout out to the Security Breach Speedrunning Discord. He's alive! Thank you so much for that run. I'd like to bring attention to a $25 donation from Moonji that says, Lore. <laughs> Thank you so much for that donation. And of course, we are powered by Twitch. And as such, get up, stretch, have some water, and we'll be right back right after this.
Welcome back to Summer Games Done Quick 2022. We have some more wonderful donations from that last run. I have $10 from a button that just says E. Thank you so much for your donation. And I have a $300 donation from Spirits. It's no comment, but thank you so, so much for that. And you know what? Let's go ahead and hear a word from Red Bull. Red Bull gives you wings. I have $25 from Mike the Bike. What's your favorite pizza topping? Mine is Lore. <laughs> Thank you so much. I think my favorite part of that was just like everything was in a normal voice and then suddenly the cheese lady was like, there's some cheese on your pizza. It's too bad she didn't say Lore. $10 from Forbazilla. Lore is the new orb. And also the real friendship was the lore we found along the way. <laughs> yeah. Well, everyone, it has been absolutely amazing to get to host for you today. I am going to hand you over to Reliever, who will be taking over from me. Thank you so, so much, and I look forward to seeing you all tomorrow. All right, everybody, welcome back again from the break. Hope you're enjoying your time here on Summer Games Done Quick, powered by Twitch. It's Reliever again. It's been, it feels like it's been so long since I was here, but it's only been about an hour. I hope you've all been doing well and enjoying the show. I've got a couple of, a couple of new donations which have come in, which I'd love to read out for you. And as a reminder, all of the donations for this, this year's SGDQ will be going to Doctors Without Borders, so they're all going to a very, very good cause. Thank you for all of the support so far. We have a $25 donation from Horror Block Hype, who says, need that Silent Hill plushie. I agree, I agree. We also have one from Anthony112, who says, Love to catch a GDQ live, long time watcher and first time donator. I'm so glad to be able to finally give a little bit of money for this awesome stream with an awesome cause. And thank you for the $20, Anthony. Thank you, thank you. Lugie Bear also donates $250 and just says, Hype! 